What's up everyone and welcome back to another epic adventure with Roger. Today you're going medieval and here for the greatest and most perfect of all legendary new player tutorials of all time. And while you're waiting for that, you can warm up with me. But before we slay mighty dragons, don't forget to subscribe with bell notifications to check out my newest content coming out several times per week. Let's get medieval! All right, let's go through this real quick. As you can see right here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven current individuals living in my little town here. I set it up nice and easy and square. The first thing I did was set up this little area for a stockpile, and then I put up this area for um, the house portion where I put beds so they can have some place to sleep pretty immediately that has a roof over it. it's pretty important for their happiness level then I put make sure I have a uh, little fire pit here campfire put in place so they can have something warm to eat that helps them with their happiness level as well one of the next things you're going to want to do is put up these uh, little statues and shrines or whatnot to get their happiness level up as well that way there they are under leisure they're pretty cheap to make guys I think they only cost wood and at the beginning that's the one thing that you have lots of so there's no reason not to make them to keep them happy after you cut down plenty of wood in your surrounding areas the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have some kind of a little wall going up so that you can protect them and have something that you're you usually start the game you have one archer if not you have a uh, short bow usually and uh, you can set them up on a higher area and have them shoot down at your enemies while your other guys hold them at whatever area like a little gate or a door or something like that is a good way to defend your little fort. So let's go to the top left here and talk about jobs. Jobs are basically the highest priority you can get to do something is a one. The lowest priority is a five, which would be look like this. And then in order to have no priority of it at all is a five. So, and it goes from left to right. Sable here, I have, I want her to tend wounds first no matter what, and I have my, all my guys like that. It's just something I find that works out pretty well. And then you can see I have a lot, some hauling, like hauling stuff at twos and ones as well because a lot of times your guys will go cut something down or whatnot and then they'll just leave it sitting out there and you need it real bad. This is a good way to make sure that they actually bring it back in a timely manner. So remember one is the highest priority, five is the lowest priority, and then say let's say you have two ones in the same on the same character. Whichever one is on the left is the one that they're going to take priority on first. Let's go to schedule. This is the way I have my schedule set up. So my guys go to sleep in the evening. They wake up in the morning. They work for four hours. They have one hour leisure. Th work for three hours, one hour leisure. Work for three hours leisure. Work for three hours leisure and then go to sleep. I have, don't know if this is the best way to do this. But I haven't had anybody get pissed at me yet. Or say I'm just gonna kill myself because they're not getting enough rest or whatever and I don't seem to have a problem with uh, production as well having it set up this way I'm sure I could get rid of one of their leisure activities and they probably would give me too much of a fuss and in order to change those all you do is click on like work and change it like that and then if you want to change it back you go to sleep or if you want to go leisure or whatever you want to do you just click on it that way let's go to manage so manage is a little bit strange you can change settings in here like it says all weapons no weapons melee one melee two ranged I honestly I haven't seen anything I have changed these around a little bit I can't really figure it out to tell me what's the best way of doing it this right here like the draft window and the flea or neutral or aggressive all that means is like when enemy shows, it basically tells you right there. Settler and flea stance will run away from any enemy in the line of sight. Neutral says they won't react and aggressive says they'll take an aggressive stance and be engage in combat. I haven't found that changing any of these makes a bit of difference because you're, you always know when the attacks are coming and all I do is I have my guys highlighted when I'm in battle and then whichever one you have targeted you have these right here in the bottom right corner you can click on draft and all that does 
is it basically puts them in combat mode so I can move them wherever I want them to go and attack whoever I want them to attack. And then when I want to switch back, all I do is click it on it again, and he just goes back to uh, doing whatever I, I have queued up to do. I'm going to send him over here to clear out these trees. So the way I'm going to do that is just click on the axe right here highlight all this and just go bam like that. Now every available person that I have available will just run out there now and start chopping those trees down. And then I have another stockpile right here that they'll be able to take that wood to instead of running all the way back in here every single time. Research. So research depends on how many chronicles you have. Mine's seriously hurting right now. Chronicles are made at this uh, basic research table right here. And what you'll want to do is, is in your jobs category under research, you'll probably want to set one of your people to do research. Now, the way I like to do it is probably different than the way other people do it. I've noticed that chronicles over time will disappear and degrade. And the reason why, that's why I don't research constantly all the time, because I feel like it's a waste of manpower. When I actually want Chronicles, what I do is I'll set like three, two or three villagers at once to do nothing but Chronicles and I'll just shut off all of their other stuff at a super low priority and stick research at a one. And then all they do is research, research, research until I have enough Chronicles for what I want to do. And then uh, I just train whatever I want to train. And the way that works is, is all you have to do is click on something and it tells you right here that I need 20 chronicles to be able to unlock this tailoring ability and this one would take 15 this furniture one right here and it'll tell you up here at the top the ones that you have available so if you were able to unlock this it would say you'd be 85 slash 85 and then have 15 chronicles available up here and then you could hit unlock and you'd be able to make this stuff right here at whatever workstation it needed to use. Then you have the region. This basically just shows you like your influence. You can, this is me right here. And then this tells me who's friendly and who's not friendly. I haven't messed with this at all and I don't, I don't know if there's any way to influence this yet. I haven't seen a way to be able to do anything like that yet. Okay, moving on over here to the top right of your screen. You can pause your game, unpause it by hitting the play. And then these, you can speed it up to times two speed and speed it up to times three speed. Once you get used to the controls, it's really easy just to stick it on times two or times three. Like I said, all of the, from what I've seen so far, all of the attacks on your territory are pretty much announced. If it is an issue, it's easy just to turn it down or pause the game by hitting the space bar. Is another way of doing it. This basically just tells you the date. Is it spring, summer, win autumn, or winter? It tells you what happens in those particular uh, seasons. It tells you how cold it is outside. And some clothing protects your villagers against the elements better than others do. So that's one thing to look out for. Historical records. Uh, this basically just tells you, like, when was the last time you were... How many raids you've won, how many raids you've lost, the enemies that you've killed... The, your number of settlers, the time that you've been playing, days from the start. It's on easy right now, so uh, it's pretty pretty simple mode. Obviously, real simple stuff like the name of your village is right there as well. This is your tutorial. It tells you pretty much everything you need to know about the specific things in the game. So let's say you wanted to know which clothing protected you the best and what the stats were in the winter time this would do that for you. Uh, here's a bug report. Haven't had to use that yet. A screenshot mode. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that was there. WASD, mouse wheel. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then obviously the options menu. Here we have a interface that tells you how much you have of all the resources. If you see something getting pretty low, it might be time to make sure that you uh, turn up your queue on that or make sure that you have enough food to feed your villagers through the winter time and that kind of stuff. Then we have the tools, the toolbars is what I like to call them. We have chop, so I can, that's what I just used. I can click on the axe. I can highlight a specific area 
and then when I release it'll queue up cutting down all those trees and the same goes for plants and this is a deconstruct so I could literally highlight my entire village like that and deconstruct the whole thing harvest is how you are going to harvest like berries and stuff from bushes and then mining is what you would use to dig holes in the ground uh, the mining is a little bit strange to me I don't I haven't used it a lot yet but when you mine it highlights a specific area on the ground and then your villagers start digging down in the dirt in that specific square that it highlights on the on the ground and then you have a hunting a hunting tool so you can highlight a specific area and make sure that you're hunting that area the whole time so pretty self-explanatory there in the bottom left we have zone so when you pull up zone it pulls up default stockpile and that lets you make a grid on the ground that looks exactly like this you can make it as big or as small as you want to it's a good thing to have a roof over your stockpile it helps your materials from degrading faster than they need to and you have three different types of stockpile you have one uh, for everything a default stockpile you have one for dumping uh, stuff and you have one for warfare now <clears throat> it doesn't really matter which one you build to be honest with you because if I click on this stockpile it gives me an interface right here that lets me pick what I want to be able to put into the stockpile and I can click off of certain things if I don't want to use it and that goes into effect immediately so if I click off that I don't want apparel in this particular stockpile and there's pieces of clothing in there your villagers will immediately go take those pieces of clothing out of there and go put them into a stockpile that does allow pieces of clothing like this one for instance that I have right here behind these double doors then next up under that we have your crops once you unlock in your research the agriculture tab it will allow you to plant certain different kinds of crops and those look like these ones right here you'll be able to place them in spots and in areas that you want them to be placed in and you'll be able to choose between cabbage flax carrots beets barley herbs red currant shrubs tall grass and birch trees and each one has its own unique thing that it does for you in the game some of them are used for cooking some of them for growing wood uh, burning wood obviously and some of them for making specific things like the uh, barley field for would make grain for bread gruel and refreshing ale stuff like that all right next up we have warfare that's giving you a tab that will allow you to build things like these guys right here the stick traps and when enemies walk over the stick traps it has a chance to impale them and do a significant amount of damage it also has a chance to miss completely I find them very effective so far also we have these wood merlons these guys right here do not prevent enemies from walking through them but they do slow enemies when they walk through them to a very slow crawl here we have a banner you can build which I don't know if it has any kind of uh, effect on things other than just looking cool you have unmarked graves I actually have a little graveyard set up over here because I don't want uh, dead rotting corpses inside my town I don't know if it makes a difference or not but I like to bury my enemies outside of my town uh, you have a pyre here which will let you to uh, burn your enemies and turn them into ashes and then a small fence there's a lot more things under miscellaneous that can be built but you have to unlock them in the research area under decorative structures and stuff like that next we have the leisure items the leisure items are what keep your villagers happy if you do not build the leisure items at least one copy of each one I always put my uh, backgammon table inside my housing and these two little uh, shrines 
in close proximity to where my villagers walk by them on a regular basis so that when they are scheduled to have their leisure activities they can find them very easily. Next up we have production. On the top left here we have the butcher's table which I have inside my building. I'm not sure that's the best place for it. I would recommend putting it next to uh, your stockpile where you keep your meat. Basically with the butchering table it allows you to butcher like elk or deer and get the pieces of meat and then you're you can use the pieces of meat to cook certain meals for your villagers or they can just eat it raw from what i from what i've seen next up we have the campfire the campfire is very simple all you do is click on it and you queue up by clicking on it right here uh, or you can hold down the shift button or the control button to queue up 10 or 100 at a time uh, this is what makes hot meals for your villagers and it will keep their mood much more pleasant so that they work harder for you and don't pass out and stuff like that. Next up we have a boyer's table. This allows you to queue up production on bows and if I'm not mistaken the next one is the basic research table. The research table I think we covered that already. That's what you use to get your chronicles and your chronicles are what you use to upgrade your research. Next up we have the work woodworkers bench and the woodworkers bench allows you to craft things like wood weapons, cudgels, wooden spears and I haven't upgraded it all yet but I'm pretty sure that's where your shields and stuff would come from as well. Next up we have the smokehouse. The smokehouse is what allows your food to pre be preserved for a longer period of time without it going bad. Almost every single item that you have in your stockpile has some kind of a hit points gauge to it and that's basically just the degradation of it that it gets over time. There's certain things that you can do to prevent that from d happening or make it go much slower. The main thing I like to do is put a roof over my buildings and it, I have the roof hiding right now but as you can see I have a roof over my main house this storehouse this storehouse and this storehouse all have a roof over them and this is going to be more living quarters right here but this roof is not done yet because I'm out of thatch at the moment these right here are interesting this one right here allows you to layer up and down this one allows you to turn your roofs on and off so you can kind of see what's going on underneath your roof. I always play with this off. I don't even, I mean, it's cool to be able to see the roofs sometimes, but I always play with it off. These are, allow you to hide the trees so you can see what's underneath them. And let's see. This is uh, overlays for the rooms. I haven't messed with this at all. Um, I'm not sure what it does. Show colored grid. Oh, there you go. So it kind of shows you the differences between the your crops and your stockpiles. That's pretty cool. Uh, show item indicators. This is pretty neat because sometimes the items are hard to find or you might lose track of where they are. And this tells me I have a bunch of loot down here that people dropped that I can use on characters that I currently have. Right now I have all of my guys equipped and I'm pretty sure most of this is just flimsy stuff. To be honest, I haven't found anything except for turning the weapons into wood or something like that with the uh, production table here is all that I found them useful for so far is like kind of like uh, disenchanting them so to speak or breaking them down. This just toggles your resource tab on the right of the screen and this is resets your camera right here. So that's pretty cool. Okay that's everything for there. Basically this is very self-explanatory. Right now this is the stuff that I can build. Uh, this gets upgraded under research and there's uh, some defensive structures and some other things that will let you upgrade like uh, the clay and brick making the stone block cutting that kind of stuff lets you upgrade things there's decorative stuff that you can build but this is for the most part is everything you're gonna need this is obviously very self-explanatory there's walls 
there's floors, there's wooden beams, so you don't have to make entire walls like this to put roofs up. You can put one beam or one wood wall and then put a wood beam in between the wood walls and then put the roof up over that. Then we have wooden doors. I need to replace this one right here. Then we have a windows. I haven't done windows yet. I haven't seen a need for them to be honest with you. Here's some steps right here and the thatch roofs obviously are very self-explanatory. Each villager has certain things that they are good at right off the bat and some things that they really suck at. So Sable here, I wouldn't want to make her like a, uh, a marksman because she couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with an arrow because her marksmanship is at zero. I wouldn't want to make her a, uh, a miner or something that needs her to be an intellectual, but gathering plants or anything to do with plants she would be really good at and then speech craft she has two stars next to it so that means that if i decided i wanted to train her doing speech craft she would be really good at it once the skill got trained up higher and then the same goes with for each character each one has downsides and upsides to them and you kind of want to just make sure that uh, you don't have one doing something that they're just absolutely terrible at. Like I wouldn't want to send Edith Aditha here uh, into the mine or have her do anything with speech craft or anything like that. It's pretty self-explanatory there as well. I'm afraid I'm losing my voice and that is going to be the end of this beginner's tutorial. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Let me get a quick shout out to my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. Give me a thumbs up on the video. I have several videos on gaming and game related news per week. Go ahead and subscribe with that notification button to get notified when my videos do come out. That's going to do it for today. My name's Roger and I'll see you on the next adventure. Take care everybody.